Welcome to this edition of Media Minute. Today we're talking about coming to America, WandaVision, and even Bigfoot. Also, we're going to delve into our favorite three books within the past year. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And in this episode, well, we're talking about a few new movies that have hit streaming services. Uh, first off, Eddie Murphy's back Ta-da. in Eddie Murphy form. I don't know. He's <laughs> <laughs> just re- repeating an old movie that he did from like 40 years back. Yeah, well, everyone else is doing it. So. Yeah. Coming well, to yeah. America. It's not coming to America, too. It's coming and then to America. And America, which makes yeah. it kind of confusing to talk about. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, which one are you talking about? It's like, no, the one with the two in the middle. Like, if you look for the two, that's the one that we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was very lukewarm on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, watching it, like my, like every Sunday, I kind of do a thing with my mom when we do like Skype movie dates because you know, cool kids. And yeah. uh, they were like, oh, let's like let's watch this, and I was like, all right, cool. Like, talked about it. I'm willing to give it a shot. Meh. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, I, first off, I think it's a little bit too far removed from kind of the source material. Yeah, I'd agree. Like, yeah. who who really cares at this point? Like, I think the first one definitely had like what it took to yeah. like make a good movie. Where they this made one? a sequel like in the '90s or even the early yeah. 2000s, the early maybe. Yeah. yeah, but like almost like 30 plus years later. If you're gonna remake an Eddie Murphy movie, do Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's what I'm saying. I'd be down. Or do a new one. Yeah. Yeah. First, yeah, just make a brand new movie. But yeah, like, I don't know. But I got to say, though, Wesley Snipes in this movie. Sky, yeah, he, so he was the highlight. Yeah. He looked like he was enjoying himself, like, a lot. Yeah, it was a blast. Yeah. I think he kind of stole the show, in my opinion. I think he did. I think he did. Uh, like, Murphy's performance was kind of low key, actually. Yeah, he, he was very chill. Yeah. And it, I don't know. It was, it wasn't the, the same coming to America, obviously, because it's the second one, but like, I was I was hoping for more. Like I wanted more of that Eddie Murphy. I, I think they tried to go in just too many different directions. Agreed. Like there's too many different like subplots. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you could have fixed that. Maybe if uh, basically the storyline is that uh, the king finds out that he has a son in America and brings him uh, back to his country to uh, to an arranged marriage. And uh, so I mean the whole going to America point was like very short. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Because most of the movie took place in the country. And, yeah, I think maybe if they, like, focused on maybe his daughters going to America or something, just... Uh, yeah. You know what was weird, though? Uh, seeing, uh, what's his face? Uh, Louis, uh, that, that comedian. Um, Louis, no, Louis. It's, not, it's not Louis C.K., uh, Louis Armiston or whatever. It was... Uh, Louis he, no, that's a, that's a yeah. <laughs> yeah, the wrong guy. <laughs> that's, that's the wonderful world, dude. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I forget, Louis something. He actually had a cartoon like back in Louis the, Anderson. Louis Anderson, yeah. Redhead dude, kind of like buck teeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he was in the first movie. Yeah, he was. He I was. tell you who they should have brought back was Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, that would have been the, wicked. As the robber? Yeah. yeah. As the ro- that was like his first role, so. Just about him. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. They show a clip of him. Yeah. Like, you yeah. see a clip of uh, the robbery and you see uh, hmm. Samuel. But, uh, yeah, it would have been wild if they brought him back for even if just a cameo. Oh, I would have loved that. I mean, Morgan Freeman's there for just a voiceover type thing. Oh, yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you see the after scenes credit? I uh, know. Yeah, it, it's not worth your time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> oh, I'll keep that in mind. That sounds like a summary of this whole movie. Ooh. Yeah. What are you I guys mean, are talking about it? I don't know. Like, it had some feel-good points. Like, it did have some points that I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. But I d- like, I didn't feel eh. like I wasted my time watching yeah, it. But it's, but it's not like I'm ever going to watch it again. It's like I watched it. It was like, all right, cool. And yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd rather go back and like watch like the, the 80s. Yeah, the first one. Eddie Murphy. Absolutely. Or Trading Places. Yeah. Dan Eckward. Yeah. CanCon. For sure. <laughs> there you go. Hey. <laughs> so, gonna call it at every time. Um, WandaVision wrapped up. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you think? I cried. Yeah. Hundred really? percent. Yeah, I did. I mean, yeah, the ending was pretty intense. Like. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah. But like when she's walking along the beach, and then like <laughs> she just like falls to her knees and just starts like pounding the ground. It's like you <laughs> bastards, you blew it up. And yes. Then, like the that camera, one. the camera pulls. Yeah. Back and you see a, the Statue of Liberty, yeah. and it was Earth the whole time. I mean, dude, you gotta step up with the spoilers, right? Yeah, man. Some people Crazy. haven't seen it yet. Yep. 
Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> no. Clearly. <laughs> no. So, as you were. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, like, I thought it was a really good way to end the series, but it definitely tugged at my heartstrings because there was parts of it I was like, no, okay, fine. But I, I love the fact that there was a Blade Runner reference. Absolutely. Yeah. That was wicked. Yeah. But, it was pretty uh, good. Yeah, I don't want to, like, delve too much of it yeah. because people haven't seen Absolutely. it yet. Uh, Basically, she tortures a whole town of people for a really long time. And they don't seem to mind. Well, mm. <laughs> there's there's more they're, to that story. Yeah, they're, a little, they're a little upset. But yeah, they but could, they're just, they're definitely like getting ready to for like the next Marvel phase. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I think uh, one is going to end up in like the next Doctor Strange. That's what they kind of uh, were setting movie. up for, for sure. Yeah. But if you haven't watched the finale, make sure you stay for the entire credits. There's not hmm. one, but two. Ooh. Yep. Cut scenes, and Get you want to make sure you see those. Because I think they, they give some pretty good hints on yeah. what's next. So I, I like the series as a whole, though. Like yeah. they, I, I know a lot of people found it like a little slow at the beginning with the whole kind of setting up the different decades yeah. of the sitcoms. But uh, by the time it ended, it's like full full Marvel Universe type yeah. thing. So. I don't know. I kind of liked it. I know people were like, oh, it's black and white. Blech. It's like, really? Like, have you not watched a black and white film? Like, yeah. Who's saying that? Who's saying that? A lot of people, people. were. People were people. pretty mad. Those people. I like. Twitter I remember. People? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. People who don't appreciate good people. good film. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Because a lot of good black and white films are yeah. like wicked to watch. And they even explain the whole sitcom. Yeah. Thing. Like right. it. It makes sense. Yeah. And then it's like when you finally like realize like why is this a sitcom? It's like oh I get it now. It's actually really sad when you find out why it's a sitcom. It's like oh yeah. It's because she's sad. Yeah. She is. She's a very sad human. They they did the whole uh, it was. F- uh, I like the fact that they brought in the guy who played uh, Quicksilver in the uh, older X-Men movies. Yep. Oh, yeah. They brought in like the same guy to play Quicksilver uh, in WandaVision. Yeah. I think my favorite part of that was like they were joking. They're like, you recast your brother? Like, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it, was... it wasn't even Quicksilver. It was some guy named like Ralph Boner. Uh, Something like that. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't the actual Quicksilver. But like, yeah. but yeah, they were just joking though, and they're just like they played into the fact that they did recast Quicksilver because the original guy he was in. Um, yeah, he died in Age of Ultron. Yeah. I think. So, but then they're like, "Oh, we need another one because X Men." Yeah. And then they brought that guy in, and everybody's like, "Why did you use the other guy? <laughs> like, would that make more sense?" <laughs> it would yeah. be nice to see them introduce the X Men into the MCU. I, I, yeah, Ooh, I don't I'm like know the, I guess like it's licensing. Okay, licensing okay for licensing for me though, I don't know if I can do it because if Hugh Jackman is not playing Wolverine, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. No, there's. I think it's time. Well, okay, but who? Bat- Bat- Batman has had like what? Eight, That's Batman. Eight though, yeah. and we're at like the fourth Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. Right now. why not a Wolverine? We'll uh, switch because it up, Hugh Jackman fits Wolverine so well. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and say Robert Pattinson would make a better Wolverine than a Batman. Oh no! I, I still no. say the Crow. Yeah, the Crow. I could see him as the Crow. <laughs> if I had to pick anybody yeah. for the for the new Wolverine, I'd say Tom Hardy. Maybe mm. I could see him doing it really well. Uh, yeah. But I'm I'm a sucker for Hugh Jackman. Well, he's got venom in you. Yeah, you only get venom. one. Yeah. Well, pff, that's a lie. Chris Evans has. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't count he's him. He's a fantastic. You don't guy. count him. No. <laughs> okay, to be fair though, they all needed a redemption from that movie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was, that was a little rough. As yeah, as long th- as they... there has never been a, a good Fantastic Four film, no. which sucks because no, like, it's a good one, comic. Well, the, yeah, the Roger, which <laughs> was, was never released. <laughs> yeah. Why is always the good ones never released? Like, Dune was never released? It wasn't really good. Oh, well? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> okay, but was it no. one of those, like, so bad it was good? Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, then they, that's good. They made it because if they didn't make it, they would have lost the uh, license for the property. <gasps> oh. And so they made it, and they didn't release it. Snap, okay. Yeah. If you can find it, watch it. It's yeah, it's, it, fun. it's on the internet. Yeah. yeah you can find it somewhere. Yeah, for sure. Uh, something else I watched. Uh, I don't think you guys have seen it yet. I saw the uh, Raya and the Last Dragon. How was it? The, um, <laughs> I, I have not seen it. Yeah, I, I mean it's a kids flick. Um, I think they kind of like they have the dragon almost like a genie character. Oh, but hmm. no one can do the genie character except for Robin Williams. Yeah, Will Smith tried, and yeah. I, I, I will give him a solid like A for effort on yeah, that. He but swung like, for the fences. Yeah. Well, part of the reason he actually took the role though is because he was a really good friend of Robin Williams, and he wanted to do him right. Yeah. And I thought that so I was like, yeah, you, you gotta, know what? Yeah. You got to respect that for sure. Absolutely. And I did. I do think he tried his best, but like. When that CG first came out and everybody was like, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the most horrifying thing I've ever seen. Yeah. It, it kind of ruined My it. eyes. Yeah, I was like, no. Yeah. Why do you do that to Will Smith? 
<laughs> yeah, like the dragon makes like uh, anachronistic, like talks about like stuff that, like in modern day, which makes no sense in, hmm. you know, this kind of uh, ancient East Asian uh, huh. setting. Weird. Um, yeah, it, was, it was a solid film, though. I mean, oh, well, well animated and everything. Uh, but in terms of like movies like that, I preferred Moana. Yeah. yeah. Which a sequel's coming out. And a TV series. Ah, Segway! Oh, yeah, Segway! <laughs> yes! Okay, I think we got is that. Is it a show and a movie? Well, the, the sequel, I, I got I got into clickbait on that one. That was my bad. Yeah. Um, I heard that there's a sequel. They're planning on it, but they haven't announced the release date and stuff. But, mm. like, The Rock and, like, the all of the original characters are, like, well, other than the grandma. I don't think she'll be making uh, a comeback. Right, yeah. But um, all of them are, like, yeah, totally down for a second movie. But, like, Disney released that there's, like, actually four TV series coming out. Mo- yeah, Moana is yeah. going to be out in 2023, which I'm pretty stoked for because, yeah. like, I feel like now that she's discovering like new islands and like finally doing what she wants to do, like, it would be kind of cool to find out where she goes. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, Disney did do like a whole bunch of TV series back in the 90s, yeah. more, like related to the movies. There was a Aladdin series, which I remember was like pretty good. Yeah, I remember that one too. Uh, I don't remember that at all. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, awesome. Used to come I loved on. It used to come on like Disney Afternoon or something yeah. like that. You're I watching remember the watching Disney Channel. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason we used to have like ITV from Edmonton and they would show yeah. it on Saturdays or something yeah. like that. Crazy. But the, they yeah and like they had Tailspin and all that stuff which <laughs> Tailspin. Nice. Apparently they brought back in the recent DuckTales. Yep, <laughs> I've actually I won't lie, I've been binging DuckTales because the nostalgia. The, the new one oh, or the old one? Old one. Okay. But I haven't watched the new one yet. Um Great yeah, Nintendo game, by the way. Oh yeah. The, Wait, the, what? The, the DuckTales vi- Nintendo game. They yeah. had a they had a video game. Yeah, and it was great. Also, what? there's a famous like Play- music out track of out of that, like the moon theme. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah they no, actually no, no. T- they in the new DuckTales they actually bring in the moon theme because nice. oh, it's wicked. so like classic and iconic. I love it. So. Uh, and how do we get on DuckTales? I, well, I don't know. <laughs> we, are, we were talking well, about we TV series the and then Disney yeah. and then nostalgia and you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great show, a fantastic video game. Yeah. There yeah. You go. But you know, Moana, though, I'm excited. Uh, apparently, they're doing a Bayamax one from Big Hero 6, which I am totally down to watch. Yeah, I could see that making a good show. I think so, too. Um, Zootopia Plus, I'm a little like yeah, lukewarm yeah, on it because like, I feel like it was a great movie. But can they make a TV show out of that? Oh, probably. Yeah, I guess so. I it's mean, a, it's, it's a cop show, right? Yeah, it's a cop yeah, show. Oh, yeah, I get Oh, weird. Yeah. A, t- a kid cop show. Law and Order is your topic. No, let's not do I'd, that. I'd watch that. And then um, <laughs> you could say <laughs> the antelope. Oh no, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> this is why you watch this. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then the last one too is uh, Princess and the Frog. It's called Tiana, and I'm interesting. I'm interested for that one too because I feel like it'll probably dive into like. I think with streaming, like they seem to be bringing back kind of yeah. more serious stuff. And in terms of series, I mean, The Mandalorian was a hit for them. Oh my like, god! They yeah. know that they don't have to necessarily make movies yeah you know, so well that's the thing too that like I've, I've found with streaming sites and stuff is like they're realizing like hey wait a minute like people like it when we release all of this at the same time or like you the weekly thing like wandavision mandalorian it's like something for people to look forward to right yeah and people discuss it too like absolutely release it week by week like it's us. wicked yep <laughs> you can't blame us though no like the mandalorian is pretty sweet <laughs> it was better with gina Anyways, because yeah, everyone gets really <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's What's next, Mike? <laughs> um, bring her back. Let, let's. Uh, well, speaking of Gina, let's right talk right. about Bigfoot. All right. Oh, <laughs> because because <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't see it on uh, TV. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I'm reaching here. Oh, I loved it. Not a good segue. <laughs> yeah, bad segue. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not bad segue. Yes. No, that Bigfoot. was great. It yeah. is open season on Bigfoot in Oklahoma. Yep. Who would have thought? Rewarding $2.1 million if you catch Bigfoot. Can't kill him. No. Can't kill him. It's catch and release. Well, I mean, isn't he technically an endangered species? You would think. That yeah. He would right? Probably. So, like, they're de- if they're real, there's not a lot of them. Or, or, there or, is a lot, yeah. and they're just really good hide and seekers. <laughs> or it's just Joe Rogan in a monkey costume. Oh my god. Which is just most likely the other. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, really. In terms of like uh, likelihood, yeah, yeah there's probably, <laughs> probably the most. Probably Joe Rogan. It, you know, like, like you know what though? Like, what if that was actually a thing though? It's like maybe not Joe Rogan, but if like a family thing, it was like I, I yo, know, we just pass it down from generation yeah. to generation. Yeah. I know tradition. people have come forward and like said, you know, they've made the tracks and stuff and show how really? they did it. Oh, so wow. not necessarily. Uh, 
No, for Bigfoot. Never mind. Yeah. 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 But if you fancy yourself a hunter, you can get a hunting license. Yeah. <laughs> or, or a Bigfoot license. I don't, I don't know what you'd call it, but it exists. Yeah, so you a, look it up. It's a tourist thing. Yeah. Yeah, go yeah, yeah it's, it's a gimmick. For, yeah. It totally is. But it's a great one. Why I think that's awesome. There? But, like, yeah, it's like, yo, come to Oklahoma. We have Bigfoot. Like. Yeah, yeah. Okay, they don't really have anything else as far yeah. as I know. Well, if you have... If you're from Oklahoma and you're watching this, tell me what to visit in Oklahoma, please. I have no idea. <laughs> Aside from Bigfoot, of course. Aside from Bigfoot. Yeah. Like, yeah. well, I mean, it's Bigfoot, though. How long have people been hunting Bigfoot for? For, like, ever? Yeah. Like, centuries? Decades, at least? At least, like, the f- 60s, maybe? Yeah. Oh, probably longer than that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's always been stories of, like, creatures yeah, and stuff. Yeti, yeah, Yeti, Sasquatch, Bigfoot. Yeah. Actually, um, crazy. probably a ton of missing. Crazy story here. Uh, one of the, Like, I've always heard of Bigfoot, like, in, like, the sense of, like, he's just, like, a giant ape dude, like, wandering. Yeah. yeah. Big but apparently there's an indigenous legend. I can't remember where I heard this from. Where apparently Bigfoot <laughs> uh, is an interdimensional being. So he goes back and forth between dimensions. That's why you can't find him. And he steals Convenient. children. Why? What? Just to steal children. Yeah. I guess he's not really that good it's of a guy. A hobby. That's just his thing. <laughs> That's just his thing. Well, no, like, so they can, like, I don't know, like, repopulate or something? I don't know. I don't know what the whole full legend is, but, like, apparently, like, that, that was a worry for this tribe. They were like, oh, my God, Bigfoot's going to take my baby. Gonna... Yeah, I don't want to paint, yeah, those... paint any Sasquatch out there as baby snatchers. Well, yeah. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm it's saying it's a legend. What, what, are, what are those stories lawsuit? where, like, you tell a kid so they'll behave? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, yeah, could you imagine, though? Like, that would make sense, though. Not the kids. Ooh, sna- no, no, not the, the kids snatching. The, the, the interdimensional. Like the interdimensional things. Why no one then that way, it's like yeah. that's why we've been able to find them for so long. Not the kids snatching. Calm yeah. down. I'm, I'm still leaning on my Joe Rogan theory. Joe Rogan, if you're watching yeah. this, <laughs> who would win in a fight, Sasquatch or Bigfoot? Bigfoot, definitely. So you really got to rack your brain. Is there a difference? The monster from Harry and the Hendersons. Oh, that was a great movie. <laughs> yes. That was like on TV like all the time back yeah. in the 80s. John Lithgow. That was a good one. That and Elf. That and Elf, yeah. Oh, I thought you said Elf for a second. I'm like, Elf was oh, a native elf, though. Yeah. Elf, yeah. Elf, yeah. Little, little oh, alien. yeah. Always he, trying to eat yeah. cats. He and... gave me like nightmares for like Smitty's a while. His sister. Yeah, oh, absolutely. My, yeah. It's weird because like I had nightmares about Elf. My sister had nightmares about E.T. So he, like he aliens were just well, I, I could see the E.T. thing. Like oh, yeah. I said, the E.T. barn scene freaked me out when oh, I was yeah. a kid. Yeah, no, Elf, big, big player in the pog scene. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, my mom saw his pogs. Really? Yeah, dead yeah. serious. Remember pogs? They're, they're back wrong. in elf form. Hang on to those. They might be worth money one day. Oh yeah. yeah. Probably not, but Oh yeah. Uh moving on. Yeah, Bigfoot. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's our Bigfoot segment. Our our kind of topic for this episode is uh some of our favorite books that we read yes. or for my case listened to because I haven't picked up a physical book in a while, but I'm rocking the audiobooks. Audiobooks are pretty wicked though, because you can do more while you're listening. Yeah. So I'm superficial. I like the physical. It's not super. That's like book. the opposite of superficial. Yeah. I don't know. It's materialistic. I, I like the, yeah. the yeah, like, physical thing in my hands. Like I can I can do both. I've done audio books and I've done physical books. But like I like the physical book because I don't know. Like the book smell is like fantastic. Yeah. It does have a smell. And it's like you're just like holding it. And you're like oh. Yeah. There's a there's so a nice. Texture to it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I know. I've, I've moved around a lot over the last couple of years, so I'm yeah. kind of. You know, when you move, books are heavy. Yeah, they, they are. They are crazy. Oh, my they God, are heavy, yeah. And you don't really want to get rid of them and stuff like that. So I, I, that's why I'm kind of limiting myself to audiobooks. Keeping it minimal. I like it. Yeah. 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 And you get the same information. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, some of the audiobook narrators are fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah. When the author actually narrates their own book. I appreciate yeah. that. Actually, one of my authors did that for his book. Nice. nice. And people actually prefer it because he has a pretty iconic voice, so yeah, makes sense. Oh, I know you're talking about. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, get into it. Who wants to start? How about you, Mike? You never start. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Okay. Start. Um, <laughs> I actually talked about this book on a previous uh, podcast. It's uh, J.M. Sersinski's uh, Becoming Superman. Nice. Uh, of course, he was the guy who uh, created Babylon 5. Nice. Uh, as, as I mentioned previously, he worked on the Ghostbusters cartoon. He worked on Captain Power. He was he wrote for Murder. She wrote. Oh, wow! <laughs> but oh, yeah, oh, what, what was it? Angela Angela Lansbury. There we go. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, um, but like his personal journey from like he grew up rough. Like yeah. really, he grew up like poor. Like his he went like pigeon hunting with his grandfather in the park. They used to just, like snatch pigeons from the park and his grandfather used to eat them. They were that poor. <gasps> wow. Oh, wow. Uh, his father was like a terrible person, like literally a Hitler youth. Ooh. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's big like oof. a big part of it. That's a big oof. Well, <laughs> lots of abuse and stuff when he was growing up. So oh, it's, man. It's a really, like, from him, like, climbing out of that and becoming, like, a successful writer. Uh, like, he did a, uh, he talks about, like, his first movie script and selling that as, like, never seen so much money before like because i think he sold this first like movie script for like a million bucks and uh, holy crap yeah so uh yeah no it's a it's a journey uh, if you're interested about like writing the creative process or if you're just looking for like an interesting book about like someone overcoming a lot of av- adversity uh yeah becoming superman i love that Check i love out. those stories because it's like it shows you that like it doesn't matter where you come from it's like you can yeah you can get out of there like he was do. even in a cult at one point oh what yeah really yeah what kind of cult what? it was like a religious cult uh, aren't they don't all? drink the kool-aid guys yeah yeah but uh no like That's the crazy. stuff that he overcame to get where he is i mean it's amazing okay i might have to i might have to check this out because that sounds super interesting yeah thanks mike I guess we can both kind of go next. Yeah, go. On the topic of absolutely devastating childhoods. Oh. Yeah. I don't like this segue. Yeah. Unveiled by Yasmin Mohammed, born in, was it Surrey? Burnaby? I think it was Burnaby in BC. That neck of the woods, BC, near the coast. Um, grew up in an extremist Muslim family. I don't even know if extremist is a strong enough word because her family was. Uh, as it's a hard book to talk about. She went through hell, yeah. all literally, yeah. just about. Like, <laughs> and how she got out of it. And it's hard to explain because it's like one of those books. Like, I had no idea this kind of stuff happened in like extremist homes, and it's like finding out that like there are kids out there who are literally getting hot oil poured down their throat because they don't know certain things, or they're getting yeah. beat because they didn't do their prayers or stuff like that. And obviously, this doesn't apply to every. Like religion and oh, no. stuff like that. Like we're not saying that's a bad thing, but this like this is not representative hear, of anybody. It's just no. yeah. her but, family specifically. But like to hear cool. like another like I guess success story out of yeah overcoming complete all that crap. Like yeah, it, it's kind of motivational. Like when I read uh, Becoming yeah. Superman, it's like he went through all that and got out of it. Yeah, you know, it kind of empowers you to like okay, I can I can handle yeah I can handle things right yeah yeah even if you take like religion out of the story it's still just like she has some crazy story really yeah. evil people in her life yeah and that, i think that's what the story it, more so is about about overcoming evil yeah, especially basically. when it's like your own family well like this book made you cry how many times oh i remember the end not i could i'm throwing you under the bus oh no, no okay. i'm i'm a very emotional person when it comes to like reading people's stories and stuff but like reading this i was a mess like for weeks afterwards because i was it's just pretty like, devastating yeah. wow i'm like how can somebody go through this and still have like the will to go on and like keep doing what you need to do right and it's really crazy because like now she's um a uh, activist trying to get people to understand that yeah. the extremists got a and co- all that kind of stuff got and a co-sign from sam harris yeah if you know who that is yeah. and uh yeah no it's a really crazy book it's one that you should read highly recommend cancon you should read it if you're prepared to read it i guess because yeah, it's, it is it's heavy. heavy. It's yeah, not. Definitely. It's not a light read. Yeah, it's read. not like a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, it's not like you know what I'm gonna yeah. spend my Sunday it's morning. Kind of like remember when Facebook only had the like option, but yeah. someone would post like really upsetting news, like mom lost her battle with cancer last night. Like, and you're like, oh, I want to hit the like yeah. button, but I want to show support. Yeah. No, like absolutely. That. But like, no, it's it's a great book, um, crazy story, and just really eye opening. I yeah. would say. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, spend some money, buy a book, and make it this one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I might have to look into Great it. Great read. I, I'm still recovering from becoming Superman. That's fair. <laughs> that is very fair. Yeah, this is not gonna. That's, help yeah, you no, out this there. is not gonna be like a, a lighter on a lighter note. Yeah. Um. Okay, I'm gonna go, and it's technically a lighter note, but it's like a murder mystery, so like, yeah, not really, but it's fiction, so it's okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, mine is, and then there were none by Agatha Christie. Yeah. The Queen of Mystery. Classic uh, yeah. murder. I love mystery. her. Um. I remember reading this in high school for the first time. And I think I've read it at least, like, 40 times since. So do you know who's done it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's I, a, it's quite the reread. Well, because wow. it's like, I don't know what it is. The characters that Agatha wrote, she was just, like, really into it. Like, And it's crazy because this came out in uh, 1939. So it's like a, it's a pretty old book. Yeah. Apparently but, it still stands up. Oh, it totally does. There's been parodies of it. Like, um, what was it? Uh... I had it written down. Oh, there we go. A Superman comic really pulled from the plot, and uh, Family Guy did, like, an episode called And Then There Were Fewer, yeah. and it was the same um, plot. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's, like, basically, like, a bunch of people are invited to this island saying that, oh, like, you know, 
it, this is in your honor, all this kind of stuff. And then hmm. people start mysteriously dying off. And it's because they all have horrible past yeah. uh, where they did terrible things. But it's like the mystery of it is really good. Um, yeah, I just really enjoy it. But like I found out some pretty interesting uh, facts about it. There was an early TV production where <laughs> one of the victims, after being killed, didn't realize he was still on camera. <laughs> so he stood up, put his hands in his pocket, kind of walked off, and people were like, "No, <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Phil, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're supposed to be dead." And he was like, he just got stabbed like ridiculous amount of times too, right? So it's like totally. It's took all right, I'll walk it off. Yeah, you were fine. Yeah, that's good. But um, actually, this was what? What else was I going to say? Uh, 2015. Uh, it was voted for the world's most favorite. Uh, Agatha Christie novel in a global vote which saw fans from over a hundred countries yeah cool they're all like yo this is the best one and then my last one that I thought was really cool was that for a while it was the world's best selling mystery and it sold over a hundred million copies yeah it's, it's one of those books that's kind of the uh, kind of establishes like that that Ab- genre absolutely yeah like um I love all of Agatha Christie's books that I've read, but this one, I don't know what it is. I will always reread it just because it's like such a good read. So if you're into mystery, crime, thriller, psychology, messed up stuff, this yeah. is the book for you. Nice. Cool. Uh, back around to me. Yeah. Um, well, of course, there's zombie apocalypse. <gasps> you know, they, they happen in, in books and novels and movies and stuff. Like, usually in the States, this series takes place in Nova Scotia. About dang oh, time. It's called the Man- Con. Yeah. Canada today. Crushing the can. So it's uh, <laughs> Mountain Man by Keith C. Blackmore. And cool. yeah, it's about a guy surviving the uh, zombie apocalypse in Wolfville, Nova Scotia. Um, it's well written. Uh, I Like I said, I, I did the audio book, the guy who does the narration, uh, R.C. Bray, who I think did the Martian oh, cool. uh, audio oh, book. The, the Matt Damon movie? The, well, the, the book before that, oh, okay. the audio book version. Uh, does a fantastic job. Um, it's it's if you've lived in Nova Scotia like I have, it's uh, interesting because they go to like Halifax at some point, and I lived in Halifax for a number of years, and it's like they're talking about like the different streets and stuff. It's like I can I can yeah. see that. <laughs> like, I, I, oh, that's cool. I've been there, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't actually realize like it took place in Canada until I was a ways into it because someone had recommended it to me, and then like the narrator starts talking about going to Canadian Tire. I'm like, wait. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't I expecting that in a zombie novel. Uh, it's a series. I think there, it's up to like six or seven books right now. Oh, I, wow. I read like the first six. So, uh, yeah. No, if you're looking for like a zombie apocalypse in uh, that takes place in Canada, uh, it's a good series. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, yeah. that sounds wicked. About time. Though, like, I feel like a zombie apocalypse in Canada, like, we'd be able yeah, to Yeah, Nova man. Scotia, you've had this coming for far too long. No, I mean, like, no, in the sense of, like, you always see it in the States or in other countries, right? Like, I've never seen something in Canada when it comes to a zombie apocalypse. But with the amount of room that we have, like, I, I feel like you could just avoid them. Like, uh, you you just drive. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be good. George Romero filmed a few zombie movies in Canada. Oh, cool. I didn't Second. know that. Yeah. Okay. Second. And didn't you say the last Dawn of the Dead? What was... Filmed in Canada. Yeah, yeah, it's some all. I can't remember where it was, like Mississauga, yeah. really, didn't somewhere well, in, cool. the, in the just outside the Greater Toronto area. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah. I, that sounds really cool. So, yep, Chris, my turn. Yeah, all right, more CanCon, The Death of Cool by Gavin McInnes. Ooh. If you know who Gavin McInnes is, you probably have an opinion of him. Um, all this book is is basically just a bunch of uh, short stories from oh, I don't know from the age of 14 to 40 uh it's actually it it's it's so funny it's even the huffington post called it insanely hilarious and i'm pretty sure they hate his guts <laughs> so uh yeah it's just random stories he's had a really crazy life uh, co-founder of vice magazine pretty famous uh started the proud boys there's that's a whole other conversation for another time but yeah, it, it's not it's not political at all. It's just crazy stories. Uh, lots of drugs, lots of sex, lots of violence. He gets beat up a lot in this book. So if you don't <laughs> like him and you want to hear him get beat up. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to talk about because it's all over the place. Uh, talks about losing his virginity. Talks about <sighs> going, <laughs> going on politically incorrect with Bill Maher, but wasted. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's just so much stuff in here. But it is... A super fun read, really short stories, usually about like four or five pages long, and just insanity. Like if if you want to 
read about someone who is unapologetically themselves. And there is kind of like a nice underlying theme here, and that's pretty much it. Just be yourself yeah. and don't apologize for it. Nice. If you're, that's always needed. Uh, you might need to bleep this, but if you're... <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> okay. Really funny. Really good book. Highly recommend. Wicked. Gavin McInnes. Rachel. Yeah. So for my next one, I actually did a graphic novel. Yep. Um, and it's called Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang. I believe I said that right. Of saga fame. Yeah. Brian uh, K. Vaughn the, showing up again. Yeah. The yeah. original saga writer. Um, this one's really cool. It's like a sci-fi 80s coming of age story. So basically these paper girls are going around their route and then something happens and they end up getting time traveled to the future where they actually meet their future selves and like they're like oh hey like what's going on? And the thing that I really liked about this though is that it's not just like the 80s nostalgia like where everything's Definitely. painted yeah, in like, yeah, like, like a rose things kind of vibe. hue kind of thing it's like they actually address a lot of the problems with the 80s too so like the homophobia like all that kind of stuff so it's really crazy because it's like for a graphic novel it, it covers a lot yeah. <laughs> but um it's uh beautifully illustrated by mr cliff and um it provides an amazing like diversity like there's different like the girls are from different races they all have different health problems like and stuff like but, that yeah and it's not forced either it's not yeah, like, like it makes sense diversity for the sake of diversity yeah. it's like no these are just kids and they yeah. just happen to be they just happen diverse. to be like that and that's the thing that i thought was super cool and then my favorite part about this that i found out is that amazon is actually looking to make a live action series out of it oh which i thought heck yes yeah it could be good because like reading it i was like oh this is like this would make an awesome tv series and then apparently somebody heard <laughs> <laughs> the want. Uh, but the really cool thing, too, is uh, Vaughn wants to make sure that the actors and actresses that are being cast in the show are completely unknown. He doesn't want the fame. He doesn't want any of that. He's like, I yeah. want to give somebody their shot, which I always appreciate. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, like, same. Same for sure. Because it doesn't, you're not relying on, like, yeah, like you're not relying on power. the name. Yeah. You know, like, and like, don't get me wrong. I understand why people do it, but it's oh, kind of nice to give somebody their shot, you know? But, like, another cool thing, too, that I really liked about this is that um, in one of the scenes, they kind of go, or in one of the, I can't remember which book it is, but in one of them, they end up going back in time, like, what was it, like, thousands of years? And they end up meeting a girl the same age who's, like, a mom. <laughs> and they're like, oh, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. And then they kind of understand, like, you know, holy crap, it's, like, it's a good thing we were born in the 80s kind of thing. Yeah. But, yeah, it was really good. Definitely recommend if you're into graphic novels. And, yeah. And fun fact, uh, he started writing this because Brian K. Vaughn was kind of dealing with how to raise a daughter. Yeah. No way. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's cool. So he wrote a book about a young girl. Yeah. That's cool. Like, well, like, it, like, the crazy thing, too, is that, like, they're able to reach out to, like, the, like, the teenage girl population in a really good way. Like, it's not, like... Yeah, I'm not sure who's reading Paper Girls, but... It's really mostly good. a teenage audience. Like, this is not for... <laughs> this isn't for kids. <laughs> no, no. At all. But, um... Yeah, it's 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 really good. 100% recommend. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Follow me for more recipes. <laughs> um, my final <laughs> series uh, is the Expeditionary Force series. Starts out with uh, Columbus Day from Craig Allenson. It's uh, narrated by the same guy who narrated the Mountain Man series, which I talked about before. This guy, R.C. Bray, he has like this nice. fantastic voice. Like I wish I had his voice. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, like a lot of the times when I'm looking for like a an audio book, I'll yeah. actually look for him as a narrator because oh, no he does way. a <laughs> yeah. fantastic job. But uh, this going back to my space stuff in Yay! outer <laughs> space wars and outer space with aliens. Uh, yeah, it's about a uh, group of aliens. They invade Earth on it's Columbus Day. That's why it's called Columbus Day. And then uh, a bunch of Earthlings get sent to like another planet to like garrison it or whatever. Like they're brought into like this intergalactic war. But not everything is as it seems. Ooh, and, is it ever? Yeah. And uh, at a certain point, they uh, they meet up with like an ancient uh, artificial intelligence called Skippy, <laughs> and uh, Skippy is fantastic. Hmm. Um, and humans basically become pirates, space pirates <gasps> in space. Space pirates during space wars. During space wars, yes. That sounds amazing. So there's space mutiny, space uh, looting. There's there's pillaging, looting. not not so much mil mutiny, but uh, uh -huh. there's pillaging. Okay. Yeah. I'm down okay. for that. Heck but yeah. it's basically like the small group of humans in this like one ship that they steal like against the entire universe because, like if they they need to do everything in secret as well because if they're found out like, Earth will just get nuked. Oh, yeah. This just makes me want to play Eve. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I'm Spreadsheet tonight. Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, that sounds awesome. Yeah, no, uh, I think they're up to like 13 books or something now. Like, oh, oh, I love or, that. Yeah, every time I one comes out, I I grab it. Like I said, That's mostly because the narrator too. Like this guy does, like R.C. Bray, man, like some Attenborough level or Morgan Freeman level uh, voice acting or narration. It's hard to explain. He's got kind of a gravelly voice, though. Oh, yeah. nice. But, uh, yeah, that's that's my third pick. Uh, All right. Said. Recommending some audible chocolate. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows where to go now. Well, weird segue. Okay. <laughs> I guess I'll go. All <laughs> yep. right. Woke by Titania McGrath. <laughs> Hilarious book. It is satire. Um, basically taking swings at... Far left, yeah, progressive woke culture. Yeah, woke yeah. culture, SJWs. It's funny because on Twitter, a lot of people don't realize it is satire. Yeah. And get really worked up and bent out of shape. Really? The, if you don't follow Titania McGrath on Twitter, you're only hurting yourself. Really good account. But this is basically a Twitter and a book without the interruptions. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. Uh, it's actually a British comedian, it's a guy. It's not this, this not yeah, Tanya this, McGrath. Yeah. She's, she's, she's not a real person. She's not real. But uh, yeah, he's just uh, as the Brits would say, uh, taking the piss yeah. out of uh, <laughs> out of SJWs and just people who are constantly offended. Yep. Kind of yeah. taking them to task. Like, like oh, reading really that funny. one. Too. Oh yeah, you read this too. Yeah. yeah, like reading that one. It's like at first it like took me a second. I was like, wait a minute, and I was like, right, this isn't this isn't legit. Like this yeah. is satire. She's not actually a slam poet. Yeah. <laughs> And radical like, feminist. Yeah, like the little poems in there too. I was just like, really funny. Oh my god. Yeah. But yeah, poems it's interesting. About her uh, lady parts and the patriarchy yeah. and. Yeah, it's a weird. It's a weird but funny read. <laughs> yeah. If you've been on Twitter, you kind of know the drill at this yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's not. It's not a big read. I read. The, I'm a slow reader, and I crush this in like an afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Same. But just because it's so good. Yeah. Titania McGrath is a genius, according to The Spectator. And I agree. <laughs> Check it out. If you're uh, tired of everyone being offended all the time. That's it? Yeah, that's all I got. All right, uh, well. That was almost a sentence. Almost. <laughs> almost. Uh, so, yeah, for my last one, um, everybody knows this guy. And uh, it's right. Green Lights right. by Matthew McConaughey. Yep. <laughs> um, at first, I was, like, really surprised. I was like, Matthew McConaughey is a book? Like, what? Because, like, I'm sorry. I definitely was the kind of person that looked at him. I'm like, oh, he's the rom-com guy. Yep. For a long time. He definitely time. had a streak. Well, yeah. and it's, it's kind of interesting because sure. he, like, talks about his life. And it, it's, it's weird because it's like a memoir, but it's almost like you're reading his journal. Like, it's because it, it's... It, Dear diary. <laughs> not quite like that. <laughs> but, like, he, like it's crazy because there were some things in his life, like, I obviously had no idea about. And he hasn't talked about for, like, 50 years. And it was like, he just, he had all these journals and him and his wife were like, you know what? I should write a book. Like, let's do it. And then it's like, he tried to get a ghostwriter and then the ghostwriter yeah, was, was like, no. Ask, like, he must have had a ghostwriter. He didn't. He wrote really? it himself. He took all the journal stuff that he thought was really applicable to his life and to like, <laughs> to help others and like, put it in there. Yeah, I would have assumed yeah. a ghostwriter. I totally thought so too. Yeah, but, I mean like 90% of like the actor, like autobiographies, yeah. Yeah. it's usually a ghostwriter. Yeah, and that's a, a little bit of help. And that's the yeah. thing that I was like really surprised about is like he he openly explains that he used his journals. Um, he did. He's quite the writer actually. He does he does poems, he does short stories, he put that all in there. And my favorite thing is the bumper stickers, which is like these little like tidbits of uh, like advice or like something that he really liked that he wanted to put down. Little McConaughey-isms? Yeah, basically. Yeah. But it's kind of funny because, like, <laughs> one of it. my, like <laughs> one of the, some of the things that I like read about uh, I, that I was surprised was about was that he like actually never wanted to be an actor. He didn't know what he wanted to be. <laughs> he wanted to be a lawyer originally, like a defense lawyer, because he thought that you know I could do it. And then he and realized he ended up playing one. Yeah, he did. Uh, but he ended up falling into the acting business by accident. He was a hand model at first. He was in film school. Yeah, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Dead serious. They said that like, like that was his first gig was as a hand model, and I was like, no Wait, way. He's David Duchovny. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But um, and then like he ended up getting the part of Woodson in Dazed and Confused by complete like just fluke. He ended up yeah. running into this guy at the bar, talking to him. They all got super drunk together, and then hmm. they took a cab back. And uh, the director was like, yo, man, come to set tomorrow. I got a part for you. And he was like, okay, cool. And like he literally <laughs> described it as a hobby turned career. Like he yeah. never wanted to be an actor. And mm. he, then he was just like, it just happened. But that 
iconic all right all right all right line completely improv they didn't even have him in the scene and the director liked him acting so much that they were like hey you want to do this scene quick you're just gonna pull up and say hi and he's like okay and he, he like actually explained the process he's like i'm woodson he's like i am this guy what would this guy say and then he pulled up said those lines and they've followed him around ever so since. It worked out all right. Yeah. So thank, Abs- yeah. <laughs> thank, you, uh, thank you, Richard Linklater. But yeah. yeah, and like another thing too that I thought was crazy is that he's like really open about the stuff that he's gone through. Yeah. Like he talked about how his dad died, and like the middle of him filming Dazed and Confused. Yeah. Um, he oh, talked. Wow, he's ab- still really young then. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. he talked about how like it really affected him and stuff, and how his well. mom kind of turned into his biggest fan but he was like i don't want that like i want my mom and it actually put a strain on the relationship for like eight some years because it was like she wasn't his mom anymore it was like oh this is my son like she actually did a tour when he first blew up of the house and she actually was like yeah so this is like of her home like she let like this tv access show in and she was like this is okay so this is where he slept and you know what i caught him doing every once in a while like just completely yeah blowing out his privacy he's like mom what are you doing like don't do this and it actually put like a huge strain on the relationship for a long time well, that's unfortunate yeah. but um a more positive thing though was that he um his biggest goal in life was to be a dad hmm. that was his biggest thing that's what he wanted to be is he a dad he is he has four kids oh okay yeah but um yeah it's surprisingly very philosophical and i did yeah, not expect deep. that very he's reflective. a very deep yeah. thinker and uh yeah he talks about a lot and it's super interesting if you're ever interested on like why he stopped the rom-coms he talks about that too. He says that he didn't want to be an entertainer anymore. He wanted to go back to acting. Yeah. Did he address the naked bongo? Yes, he did. Okay, yes, he did. <laughs> Apparently, the cops actually broke into his home Ooh. and arrested him. And he was like, "I ain't putting anything on. Like this shows my innocence." <laughs> and they actually held held him in jail for a while. And then they're still like, naked. Oh yeah. And then like this big well guy. Done, sir. Well done. What was it? And this big guy came up. He's like, "Man, you're gonna want to put on some pants." And he's like. No, he's like this proves my innocence. So then he like looked at the guy, and he, in his words, he described it him as like, if a man as big as a brick house is telling you to put on pants in jail, you listen. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. Oh yeah, but yeah, it was it was really good. I I gotta say, like I was pleasantly surprised. And if you're looking to get a little bit more McConaughey in your life, yeah. I would definitely suggest it. I get older, they stay the same age. Yeah, he talked about that line too. <laughs> I'm just kind of hoping like. Did he make that one up? Yeah. No, he actually oh, okay. didn't. <laughs> I, I'm just kind of picturing him. As a dad, and it, like I know this isn't true, but I'm picturing the kids named. All, they're all called all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's time all for right, time right. for dinner. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. And all right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. Do it's, they, does he say his kids' names? I feel like they're probably weird. They're not though. Actually, no? a lot like, of them are very religious. Yeah. Huh. Oh, another crazy fact from this. Right. Speaking of religion, was that he actually was blackmailed into losing his virginity, and he thought he was going to go to hell for the longest time and he's like now he's like that he's older he's like he actually said he's like i just hope it's not the case like if that ends up being the reason i go then all right that's why <laughs> so i go yeah, like, well, damage yeah. done but yeah so he I got blackmailed like... into it though i was like at 15 he Ooh. got blackmailed into it what was the blackmail he didn't explain but he did say huh. some pretty heavy stuff yeah i was surprised i was like wow i'm like this dude's really like don't... here's my life if there's a takeaway from today's episode don't blackmail 15 year olds into unconsensual sex yeah. yes uh <laughs> All right. Advice, all right, all right, all right, hey, um, all right. Anyone else got the anything, seen anything or heard um, anything new that they want to talk about? Well, for, I forgot one thing from the Matthew McConaughey thing. The all right, all right, all right thing has followed him so much that there's been girls who's actually showed him the tattoos of all right, all right, all right in certain areas. Oh. And he's actually pretty proud of it, to be honest. <laughs> he's like, it's kind of cool that like everybody I, I loves that, that line. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh watched an older film called Stay Yep. with uh, Ian McGregor, Ryan Gosling, and Naomi Watts. Nice. Came out in 2005. It's like a psychological thriller. Um, trigger warning, though, if you do have some issues with suicide or like anything like that, don't watch it because it heavily... Trigger warning. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd rather warn people than them go in it and then feel uncomfortable, right? But basically, you follow around Dr. Sam Foster, Ian McGregor's character, and... Uh, Ryan Gosling is this one of his patients that he's kind of taking on because the like Ryan Gosling's reg- regular shrink is like on extended vacation because she had a mental breakdown and uh, he starts predicting stuff and the first thing he comes up with is like I'm gonna kill myself on Saturday at midnight and like hmm. usually when a shrink hears that they're like oh wait yeah. okay we gotta fix this but it kind of takes you down this rabbit hole of like 
what's reality, what's not. <laughs> and it's it's super interesting. Yeah. And the only thing that I didn't like was that Naomi Watts' character didn't really get much play, and I feel like she should have. But um, it was super crazy, super fun, and really dark. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we're doing trigger warnings, <laughs> trigger warning. <laughs> <laughs> Massive trigger warning. And no trigger warning at all. Learn how to take a joke. <laughs> there we go. Trigger I, warning. I just rather, I'd yeah. rather warn people just so that way if they go into it, they they know, right? Yeah. That's all. Um, I've been enjoying Superman and Lois. Really? Yep. Yeah, it came out a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah, that's uh, now, isn't it? And a lot of people are. A lot of people are surprised on how well they're doing Superman. Uh, he's basically like the classic Superman, but in this one, he's he's a dad as well. Oh, crazy! Um, so, yeah, no, it, it's <laughs> more like a CW show. I've, I'm I'm impressed. I'm glad. Uh, when I hear Superman's a dad, I just can't help but think of the Jason Lee speech talking to I mean, Stan. Was, it, was it talking to Stan Lee or Brody? Talking about how like Superman must like he can't have kids because he he yeah. did have a kryptonite condom and it'd probably kill him. <laughs> There's more to it than that, but more rats, great movie. That is a good movie. It is. Um, yeah, but no, it's the uh, first two episodes that sound good. Yeah, is Gina Carano in it? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Why? No. Never keep, mind, why? Right? Why? Because we're yeah. trying to keep it light, man. <laughs> yeah, well, what, what's I, wrong with what? I just want to see more stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that wraps up uh, this edition. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I'm Michael Forward. I'm fired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rachel Edge. We'll see you next time. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell. <laughs>